여러분 안녕하십니까? Bonsoir à tous. Bonsoir. 네, 오늘 저녁 정말 멋진 댄스로 시작하겠습니다. Now we'll start with a really awesome dance. 네, Safari Dance Team을 소개합니다. We introduce you a Safari Dance Team.
Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. I'm so thankful that you're all here for this completion ceremony. All of you who are here, you received a lot of grace of God. You're supposed to be here for three months in Korea. Well, by the blessings given by God, now you've been here for five months eating delicious food and you're turning into Koreans. You like kimchi? You all have become Koreans. Actually, this is a really thankful, um, you know, place. Each of them will go back to their countries and do the mind education and uh, change people's hearts. And this is what we portray. Everyone here will change thousands and, and tens of thousands of people. When you go back to your countries, please tell people to come to Korea a lot. I really hope that you can also come back. We give glory to God. With a prayer, we will start the evening service. Pastor Jaehong Kim of Good News Incheon Church will come out and pray. Dear Father God, we are so thankful. We are having this such a meaningful day. The many presidents of the countries are inviting us to educate their people. This time, the French-speaking countries of West Africa, they came here to receive mine education. Today, for many countries, they only pursued economic growth, but they get to realize the importance of mine education. They did not know how to lead people's hearts, so they were just wondering. The president met with Pesoksu Park, and as they talked with him, they get to know this importance of mind education. Many countries requested for mind education. From these French-speaking countries, uh, many teachers came and received education. Today, many people do not know how to think. They do not know how to have self-control or how to fear. So they have uh, many uh, difficulties in their lives. We teach them how to think, how to have self-control, how to exchange, which is the fundamental, the basis of the, the uh, one education, and they changed. We find this mind education from the Bible when we taught them the life of faith. Their souls were forgiven of sins, not only were they saved, but they had those many changes in their lives. Uh, 
Starting from teachers who are trained this time from many countries, many will come and receive education and training. When we think about it, we are so hopeful. They will change the whole world and make many people happy. We thank God for giving us this mind education. And those who are completing this mind education program, may God bless them. When they go back to their own countries, being held by the hands of God, may the Lord bless them to be the workers of God. We give things, uh, thanks and glory to God in the name of Jesus, I prayed. Amen. Thank you. IYF and Cote d'Ivoire has many you know, relations. The president of Cote d'Ivoire That just because the economy grows does mean that um, this country becomes developed the country. The mindset of the people should be better for the country to be a developed country. So he goes all around the world. He has been looking for good mind education and he met the IYF. So from Côte d'Ivoire, they are having this active mining education program. And we think that Côte d'Ivoire will be a better country. And not only that, This ambassador of Cote d'Ivoire in Korea, he's really a you know, nice man. He truly loves IYF. He's very close to Pesoksu Park. He was told that we are having this completion ceremony. He just ran here. Ambassador Silvestre uh, will come out and give us this congratulatory message. So we are coming with a big round of applause. Hello, everyone. Honorable Pesoksu Park and the president of IYF. and the VIPs, IYF, and everyone here. With joy, I'm able to say this. They completed mind uh, education course. West and Central Africa students, uh, they came here and joining this completion ceremony. Uh, 
people who have a complete ED from Congo, Guinea, and Burkina Faso, and Togo, and from Cameroon. Representing the Ivory Coast and representing other representatives, uh, I would like to deliver DP's the things to Pasoxo Park. For many youth in my country and people of IYF, I thank them for preparing the program. As you know well, the value of the uh, mine education is adding more value to our government and is playing a key role in Africa. Korea chose this good education and I think it's really good. Through this mind education, through character education, we saw how this country was leading the youth and how they brought about this you know, development and change. Through mind education uh, running in Korea, we are getting these ideas. Science, economy, and including medical in many different areas. Korea had many success and they were really um, ahead in income when it comes to preventing coronavirus. This is the education we learn a lot in like, you know, a country like Korea. The countries in Africa, through the, we would like to learn many things through experiences uh, in education in Korea. And we believe that we can achieve this hope through IYF. And especially many youth of you know Africa and Cote d'Ivoire, I thank the passport park and many other people in charge for really pouring their hearts. Last April, the students have planned to go back to their countries after completing the program. But there are many problems and difficulties, but they overcame them and now you're here. I really thank you for um, your good behaviors. Representing the VIPs abroad, I would like to give the words of things. This education, the courses that you've learned, I uh, congratulate you on completing them.
You who completed this program, I hope that you can apply these in the countries, in the in the institution that you are working in. Especially when I see those of you who are from Cote d'Ivoire, you are our pride. When I see you have such a big value for our country. Through the education that you received, I'm planning to make new Cote d'Ivoire. Through this education that you received, I really hope that you can change the mindset of your relatives and people around you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. He is the ambassador uh, from Cote d'Ivoire. Good News Gangnam Church has really great pastor. His name is Jone uh, Lalabala, and his wife is the ambassador from Fiji. Ambassador Tiniana Lalabala, she will come out and give us a congratulatory message. Hello. Very good evening to you all. Uh, uh, Very good evening. I greet you from Fiji. First of all, I would like, First of all, I would like to congratulate you, the uh, graduates. Pastor Su Park, Excellency Ambassador Cote d'Ivoire, Pastors, Pastors, and members of the News and IYF. I would like to express my sincere appreciation to Pesoxo Park. For inviting me, my husband here today. To come and celebrate. With the graduates of Cote d'Ivoire and other African countries presenting here. The achievement you have made in the past three months. I've been told that you've been here over the time you're supposed to be here because of the COVID-19. I'm sure you're enjoying for enough time. You're not feeling homesick? I know you want to stay here for another year. We have to ask Pastor Supak for that. You have to ask Pastor Supak for that. 
I would like to. Uh, I would like to. Just my appreciation and congratulations uh, from chap Romans chapter 12, verse 1. We need to offer our bodies. In 12 verse 1, he said, we need to offer every part of our body and be transformed, renewal of our minds. This is a sacrifice uh, and we worship God. Renewing our mind every day. Because we need to renew our mind every day because God renews our mind every day. What you have been taken through is about teaching our minds. I must say, as human beings, we fail to use our brains and our minds. And we are mostly driven by emotions. And most of the time, we don't, of time, we don't think through what we do or the decisions we make, how we relate to people. Sometimes, we, because of our emotions, rather than thinking through what's, what's good, what's best, what is not, what is not good for our daily lives. So I know that your countries, that you when you come back, you'll make an impact in your countries. You have come back with a renewed mindset. You have come back with a set of values and with a set of skills and thinking abilities. This is what you came here. Before you came here, there was a different mindset. Now you're going back with a different mindset. Yes? I must say that your countries are privileged in our like that you're here. When you go back, what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? You need to impact your country. It's like drop in the ocean. It impacts. It's just spreading wider. So I hope and pray that you'll go back and make, uh, make your country. Ici, 
vous allez maintenant réfléchir. La question, c'est ce que, comment vous allez maintenant euh, affecter ce que vous avez appris dans, dans vos pays. Comment vous allez apporter des influences dans votre pays. Je crois qu'il y a des questions euh, qui vous laissent maintenant, qui vous restent. It's going to be a challenge. There's going to be a challenge. Going back and implementing will be a challenge. But you have a high office that is committed, that gives you edge to go back and do it. Nowadays, in the world today, the time that we are living in is not a normal time. It is time that is shaking and moving everyone. It's people like you who will go back and make a difference. Quand vous rentrez chez vous, le travail que vous allez faire, c'est un grand défi, je crois, parce que c'est évidemment, ce n'est pas quelque chose de très facile. Mais quand vous allez rentrer, vous allez travailler avec votre gouvernement, votre, votre chef d'État en collaboration, et ainsi vous allez changer, vous allez apporter ce changement. On that note, on behalf of my government, and on behalf of my uh, the Fiji Embassy in Korea, I wish you all the best. And my best wishes and prayers that you will go back stronger, very, very strong and very positive. Go back and make a change in your country for the future of the youth and of the tomorrow, and you will be the leaders. God bless you. And thank you very much. De la part de la, mon, mon, mon ambassade, de la part du Fiji, de la part de mon gouvernement, je vous assure, quand vous allez rentrer dans votre pays, vous allez apporter beaucoup, change, beaucoup de changements, vous allez changer votre culture, vous allez changer votre entourage, vous allez donc apporter ces changements dans votre pays, je vous assure. that we do we can overcome darkness and the words connect our hearts The mind gave me a true change through the mind. I was uh, to discover other people's flavors. To know other people's flavors, I must discover my weaknesses. Every person has their own flavor. When we are low, then we can feel other people's flavors. 
the mind improved the uh, uh, spousal relationship. I'm so thankful that I'm able to receive my education. The important thing is that when I insist on my own rightness, the relationship with my husband was worsened. But through this mind education, it improved and I became more happier. Thank you. The mind is the value of life. Mind is a management of thoughts. Mind is a change of a perspective. We cannot put these five months of time in this short video clip. Among those who are here, there's just someone who came here with a sick body. And with many economic difficulties, they came here. And there were many difficulties, but they came here. And they are getting things that are really precious and blessed blessing and this time we'll have one person and get to hear this person's testimony from Burkina Faso please uh, brother Chris Alige Good evening. I'm the, the best mind teacher and happiest person, Elise. I was not a person who had a good relationship with my parents. I did not have a good relationship with my parents. When I was seven, my parents had a huge fight and scarred my heart. My father beat my mother, so I hated him. But I hated my mother more because she could have run away, but she didn't, but she stayed with him for 20 years. I wanted to become a doctor who could treat the uh, patients. But I saw my parents fight, my dream changed. I wanted to be a judge. I wanted to judge a person like my father with the law. As you know, studying the law is very difficult. In my country, be a judge is very difficult. To avenge my parents, I tried very hard. In 2017, um, in September 9th, I received the salvation. Even after receiving salvation, my relationship with my mother did not improve. 
In the previous year, my father had passed away. Through the funeral of my father, I realized that my father had four other children other than from my mother. When I heard that, I almost fainted. And my rage toward my mother became bigger. If she was normal woman, how can she live with a man like him? How do she stand him? I you know, had my heart closed towards my mother. Even though I received the salvation, I could not uh, remove this rage in my heart. Having that heart, I came here to Korea to receive my education. As we were educated on change, one of the professors, he said, write a letter thanking one of your family members. I just listened to the professor, but in the core of my heart, I did not have any gratitude towards my parents. I just listened to him. And then um, we had a phone call time, so I called my mom and asked her, Mom, the, my dad beat you, but why did you stay with him? My mother replied and really came home to my heart. Chris, you're only eight. Why, what would have happened if I abandoned my husband and ran away? For the first time, I was able to meet my mother's heart and her sacrifice. In my life, also two other people made a sacrifice. Jesus, for our sins, he was sacrificed. And my mother also sacrificed herself for me. As I received this education, I was very happy. This, through this mind education, the relationship with my mother improved so much. Through the mind education, I realized my mother is the best mother in the world. I thank Good News Mission for allowing me to have this mind education. past five months, I thank all the professors who served us and helped us. I give deep, deep thanks to Pasok Supar. We thank you for inviting us to Korea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. In the future, many more people we hope that they will change through my education. At this time, the world's best choir, with the Grosha's choir's praise, we will go give glory to God. Please give them a big round of applause.
Yes, thank you very much. I think we're much more thankful because we're with all of you. To see all of you change, we're so thankful. And at this time, is a time for us to fill our hearts with the Word of God. We will invite Pastor Oksu Park. Please give a big round of applause. Hello everyone, such a beautiful evening. For the past few months you went through so much. Now I know that you went through a lot of trouble. Now do you know how to eat kimchi? Do you like kimchi? They say it's very delicious. You need to also learn how to make kimchi. My wife, whenever she goes abroad, she always takes kimchi with her. One time, she put kimchi inside of a big jar and she got in big trouble. So let me first read from the Bible. Let's look at the words of John chapter 9. Chapter 9 from verse 1. Jesus passed by and he saw a man which was blind from his birth. After his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore, and washed, and came seeing. He washed and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which were before had seen him that he was blind said, Is it not this that he had sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Okay, right through there. Jesus met with many people. However, as those people met with Jesus, no matter who it was that Jesus met, He always delivered His heart to them. The people who, 
The people who accepted the heart of Jesus, they become like Jesus. One time my wife was on a plane and she went to LA. And so as soon as she got off the plane, she realized that it was not LA, but it was San Francisco. And so then she went and called somebody over. Oh, we're supposed to be in LA, but we came all the way to San Francisco. And so then all of a sudden, the person there, she was very shocked, and then she went all the way over to the cabin. So usually when the plane takes off, it's not actually the pilot that pilots the plane. What the pilot only does is he only makes it so that the plane can take off on the runway. Once it gets it to a certain altitude, all of a sudden, the seatbelt light turns off. And from that moment on, it's the computer that actually pilots the plane. There are numerous programs that are within the plane. The program that goes from Seoul to New York, then you have to put in the New York program. In order for you to get to Abidjan, then you have to put in the program to go to Abidjan. But then the pilot that day, he made a mistake and he was supposed to put in the program to go to LA, but he put in the program to go to San Francisco. And really, this rarely ever happens. And so it's the computer that actually pilots the plane. Inside the plane, there are sensors and it's able to calculate the wind speed that comes. And so, now calculating everything very precisely, it's able to get to its final destination exactly the way it wants. But the problem is, it's not that the pilot and the computer are able to pilot the plane together. Usually, because there are two pilot seats within a plane, and so there are two pilots that are piloting the plane. And so just because of that, doesn't mean that they do it all together. If the main pilot says, I got, then what he does is he's the one who holds onto the steering st stick. And then on the other hand, if it's the co-pilot says, you got, then he's supposed to let go. There's no way that two pilots both are able to pilot the plane at the same time. And so, when you connect these things into spiritual life, I don't know if this may make sense to you, but with spiritual life, there is Jesus who leads us in our spiritual life, and then also all of us who are following that Jesus, there is a relationship that has been formed between us. However, the most important thing through spiritual life is what? Let's say that it's the pilot that is piloting the plane. It becomes a problem if, let's say, the pilot is gonna, the plane is gonna go somewhere else. In terms of spiritual life, this is something that has been distinctly distinguished. When it's God who's doing living spiritual life, no matter what kind of thought I may have have. It's always looking at how God may lead my life. However, everyone, inside the book of John, there are many instances where many people meet with Jesus individually and they have a conversation. John chapter 3, there is a name by the name, man by the name of Nicodemus and he has a conversation with Jesus. In John chapter 4, there's a story about Jesus meeting with the woman at the well, a Samaritan woman. John chapter 5 is a story about how Jesus met with a man with infirmity for 38 years. There's a story about how Philip and Andrew met with Jesus. John chapter 8, it talks about how Jesus met with the woman caught in the act of adultery individually. And then, in John chapter 9, there's a story where there's a person who has been born blind. Now everyone, if we look at the Bible very precisely here, 
between Nicodemus and also the difference between Nicodemus and also within the blind man having conversation it's very interesting as Jesus he says in the Nicodemus he says that I know that you are a teacher that come from God if God not be with you there's no way that you can do all the things which you do then in te those terms actually the Nicodemus was very knowledgeable however it seems as though that Jesus says something that's very out of order if a man is not born again he cannot see the kingdom of God and now what does this mean even though you know me Nicodemus you know that I am a man that comes from heaven you know that God is with me but you cannot do it with your thoughts you must be born again you must listen to my words however now Nicodemus needed to listen to the word of Jesus and because he studied a lot and there was many things which he knew and therefore because of his known knowledge there was no way for him to be able to communicate together with Jesus however this man who was born blind in chapter 9 everyone let's talk a little bit about a blind man everyone do you know how much is it that you know about a blind man everyone they say that there are people who are born blind and then also there are those who are blind throughout their lifetime so a person who is born blind let's say as he's walking his way and somebody calls his name and so as he's walking he just says yes however a person who used to see and then all of a sudden due to an accident let's say his uh, his sight went out then if somebody calls him what happens what he does is he turns his back he turns his head why because a person who has his eyes open who can see they look at each other and so they turn their head back however a person who is born blind no matter who calls out to him there's no way that he turns his head back so this is very precise so now let's say that a blind man is walking into the streets and then somebody calls out to him a person who was born blind even though somebody calls out to him because he's never seen anything to begin with there is no need for him to even turn back because even if he turns back he cannot see and it says oh yeah yeah yes yeah. if somebody calls he just goes but let's say that I have an experience of having my eyes be open so then somebody calls out to you then you turn your back right you turn your head back right do you also do that too and so then you can't just turn back you have to be able to see that you have to know in order for you to turn back however a person who was born blind he never once turns back because just because he turns back doesn't mean that he can see so this is a very clear difference so everyone if I talk a little bit more in detail what it means this person was born blind so everyone let's start talking about this there was a certain child who was born blind and he was blind from his birth however he goes and has a good time with his friends all the time and so they had a very good time all together and so he says hey friend let's play and he says oh but your friend went to school this kid that he used to play with ever since he was young all of a sudden he went to school and so then he waited for him later and then in the afternoon later that friend came back and then while they were playing they asked hey where did you go today I went to school oh how come you didn't take me with you you can't go there why because you can't see anything and so long ago when other kids jump he jumps and then so he just plays around with the other kids he never knew that there was any difference between him and the other kids oh why can't i go because you're blind even if you go to school you can't study so aren't you blind well i'm not blind that's why i go to school so then what does it mean to be blind 
You cannot see anything. What does it mean to see? He couldn't understand. Mom, what does it mean to see? How come other kids said that they see, but I cannot see? What does it mean to see, Mom? They say that I'm blind. Mom, what does it mean to be blind? It's a very heartbreaking thing. And so this man, he was blind, blind. However, he never knew that he was blind until that point. When the other kids play, then he's able to play, and they're able to sing, they're able to jump around together. He never knew at all that he was a sinner, or he was blind. However, he called out to his friend, and all of a sudden he heard that his friend went to school. And then after his friend came back from school, he says, Hey, how come you didn't take me with you to school today? You can't go to school. Why? Because you cannot see. I can see. You don't know that? What does it mean to see? Mom, what does it mean to see? They said that I cannot see, but what does that mean? I cannot see. How come I cannot see? Really, it's such a heartbreaking thing. And from that point on, there was one thing that he knew. He realized that he cannot see. And so then, as the mom says, Oh, what does it mean to see? They say that I can see with their eyes. But what happens when you can see? What happens when you can see? He cannot understand. Now, let me tell you. There was a certain blind man who was walking in the streets. So if you look at the words which we read today, this blind man met with Jesus. And so, he put clay upon his eyes and then he says, go and wash in the pool of Siloam, right? So then does he know where the pool of Siloam is? He doesn't know. So let me ask. Oh, sir, is this the way to go to the pool of Siloam? Oh yeah, you go a little bit this way. And then about 50 meters in front of you. Then the road splits into two. You must take a right there. Let me ask. That person will probably listen to him, right? Is that right? So then let's say that just to make fun of him and also let's say that just to cause him trouble he purposely gave him the wrong directions do you think there is any way for him to know that no there's no way that's why whether he accepts or not there's nothing which he can do why because he's blind if there's somebody who could teach him in the right way then he can walk in the right way However, on the other hand, if there's somebody who's teaching him, guiding him in the wrong direction, the blind man has no choice but to just follow whatever he tell he's, he's being told. If a person has his eyes open, oh, it seems like this person's lying to me. And so then he can look for a different way. However, the blind man was not liked so. Let's say that even if somebody told him something else, then he has to follow. Even if he's told the wrong directions, he has to follow. That's why Jesus put clay upon his eyes. He said, hey, why are you putting clay upon my eyes? Oh, don't put it there. There's no way that he could do that. He doesn't even know why they're doing it. They just said, hey, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And then what does the blind man say? Oh, how much further do I have to go to get to the pool of Siloam? Oh, is there any downhills? Oh, is it not dangerous for me to get there? Oh, what if I fall into the water? And he has no choice but to do exactly according to what he's asked. So that person, when he met with Jesus, he does exactly what Jesus tells him. But a person who has his eyes open, what's the difference between him and the other blind man? Is that they have their own wisdom, they have their own methods, they have their own experience, and they have their own ways. 
So how are they? Even though they listen to the word of Jesus, they don't accept it well. They follow their own methods. That is the reason why there are many problems inside of spiritual life. So then everyone, if you read through the Bible, so today we had two ambassadors to be invited and then we had dinner together. And so then tonight at our restaurant, at our cafeteria, we had such good food. There was beef. And so the best thing, the best thing they do is they, they fry the chicken. They try the chicken really well. And so they gave a little few wings. And so chicken and then also most especially. <laughs> so the chapche, they made the chapche. And so then when you're 77, there's a lot of interesting things. What was my wife's name again? If I do that, then I get in big trouble for my wife. Of course, that's just a joke. Of course, I know her. But you know, I know who he is. Oh, I don't remember the brother's name. And so the very interesting thing is, when I see me being able to drive back home, it's so amazing actually. Ever, you don't think that way, right? You think it's so obvious, right? Many people, they have many different thoughts. And so, even though Jesus says it, they still keep with, they, they keep their own thoughts. Now, Jesus, he said it to the Gadimus. If a man is not born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, he said. Everyone, now those words, whose words are those? They're the words of Jesus, right? Then, oh, if I'm not born again, then I cannot say the kingdom of God. That's how you're supposed to react. Oh, Jesus, is that true? Oh, then I cannot be, if I'm not born again, I cannot say the kingdom of God. Then, what shall I do to be born again? Isn't that what he's supposed to do? But, how did he respond? Oh, if a man is old, then how can he be born again? Does he, can he go back into the mother's womb and come back out? Those words, they're not words which accepted the word of Jesus. But basically that means that when you say, ah, oh, being born again, that doesn't make any sense. He's rejecting it. Because there are certain things which Nicodemus knew. There were also his own experiences. He had his own knowledge. And he also had money. He had a path that was different from the way of Jesus. And therefore, he says, how can a man be born again when he's old? Can he go back into the mother's womb and become out again? This question that he's asking, how can a big man go back to the mother's womb, right? That doesn't make any sense to do that. Basically, he is talking about a posture and he's expressing how he cannot accept those words. He's not willing to accept it. It's the same story, but how about the blind man? Jesus put clay upon his eyes. And he tells him, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. What does the blind man say? Why do I need to go to the pool of Siloam and wash? It seems like I'll be more dangerous. Oh, how far is that? I need to go and beg. Oh, I was not able to eat food yesterday. So everyone, the blind man, never mentions that at all. Why? Because he doesn't have the ability or the power to make his own decisions. Because if he were to try to find the ways with way to Siloam, he has no way. He is a person who has no choice but to follow the word of Jesus exactly as it is. So therefore, he is able to follow the way and get to Siloam as he's being told. Oh, is it still far? Oh, are we close to the Pool of Solem now? How much further do we need to go to get there? 
Is there a downhill to get there? Oh, will I slide down and get into the pool that way? And no matter who it may be, he's accepting the word of other people exactly as it is. Let's say that other people might try to tease the blind man and then make him go into the wrong direction, but he has no choice but to get there. And even though he's being taught into the wrong, he's being told to go into the wrong direction because he cannot see anything in front of him. Therefore, he has no way to be able to form and go another way. Therefore, everyone, during the time at which Jesus met with Nicodemus and the point where Jesus met with the blind man is completely different. The blind man, he has no other opinion other than the word of Jesus. But because having his eyes be open, they are different from the blind man. Oh, our pastor, he just says, come to church. Oh, you know, our pastor, he says, he nags too much about this and that. Everyone, your opinions, yes, many of them actually are preventing you from following Jesus. Why? Because all of you have thoughts which are different from the thought of Jesus. And therefore, you really don't want to follow the way of Jesus. You have your own reasons. There are problems. Therefore, actually this is blocking us from accepting the true way of Jesus. So one day, Jesus he went to the house of La Lazarus. And Lazarus, he ended up dying. It says that if my last had been here, then he would not have died. For when Lazarus was sick, and so the younger siblings, they had said that, oh, you know, they, my, the loved ones are sick. And so then he did not come out. But then all of a sudden, after Lazarus had died, that's when Jesus showed up. The very first thing which he did, actually, when he first met with him was, he says, Oh, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. This is actually grief. And so, when we told you to come, you should have come. And if you had saved our brother, he would not have died. Why did you come after death? And so Jesus says, Your brother shall live. However, Mary and Martha... When he says that your brother shall live, that means that he will live. But according to their own eyes, he, they've never seen any instance where a blind man or a dead man is alive, comes alive. That's why their knowledge collides and clash against the words of Jesus. Oh, your brother is dead and you need to live. Oh yeah, he lives and he will live on the last day of the resurrection. And therefore, their thoughts are not able to come in they're not able to be combined with and come in they're not able to come in line with the word of jesus the most important thing is uniting my heart with the heart of jesus why was it that i needed to unite my heart with the heart of jesus Even though I've made many lies, but also I've been deceived several times from other people. Actually, I was not even not, I did not even know that I was deceived. From time to time, there are times where I realized that I was deceived. So therefore, if we are not perfect, the things which I know are not all whole. Therefore, if we are able to simply accept the word of Jesus as faith into our hearts, then actually spiritually it becomes very easy and it's also very good. Jesus, everyone, if you look inside the words of the Bible, he says unto Peter, feed my sheep. So everyone, these are very important words. And so he tells them to be able to receive the guidance of the shepherds and live according to that. So everyone, I'm a, being a pastor, I need to be able to teach everyone to go into the rec, right direction. However, most people, 
They only follow the word of Jesus when it seems right to them. They don't follow when it doesn't seem right to them. So this time around, I did a broadcast for the Fiji TV. What they said was, is that they started asking me regarding the words of 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. It says, For if we confess our sins, then He is just to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us of all righteousness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, everyone, if you read through the words here, it seems as though that if we confess our sins, that is when our sins will be washed. But everyone, let me tell you very strictly. Everyone, if we confess our sins or if we're able to have our sins be washed, is there any way, is there any reason for Jesus to have to come and wash us of our sins? Is there any reason for Jesus to come? If we can confess our sins and wash our sins away. So then these words simply then would just only contradict the cross of Jesus. Does that mean that the Bible is wrong? This is something that which we must come to unveil. So it's not that we should just only look at the words of chapter 1 verse 9, but also if you look at the words of chapter 1 verse 7, it says, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, that we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Verse 7 it says, The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. But also verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, then He is faithful to forgive us of our sins. They are clearly different. However, in order for us to know this truth precisely, the people that only look at the words of verse 9, they just think, Oh yeah, if we confess our sins, then He will forgive us of our unrighteousness and sins. That's wrong. The reason is because, if you read through the words of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, it surely says here inside the words that and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without the shedding of blood there's no remission so everyone some people they just think that oh if I believe this and then my sins will be washed and I'll be cleansed but everyone if in order for to know these words precisely then there's a need for us to be able to know about the words of the sin offering inside the word Leviticus chapter 4. What does it say in Leviticus chapter 4 inside the sin offering? If the common man, he comes to sin before the Lord, and, he, and against the commandments of the Lord, and it comes to the knowledge of his sin, then he shall take a kid of goats without blemish and give offering. First thing is, you have to be able to commit sin without having to come to the knowledge. You have to be able to come to the knowledge of sin. You have to be able to know that you have committed the sin. And so, if he comes to knowledge of the sins which he has committed, then it says, Therefore you will take the kid of goats as an offering. And so this is the process of which you commit, you're able to receive forgiveness of sins. You first come to the knowledge of your sins. Acknowledge that you are a sinner. People who realize that they are sinners. They must bring the sheep that is blameless 
For the wages of sin is death. To wash away sins, death must be paid. So, female goat must be killed. On the head of the sacrifice, he must lay his hands. He must lay his hand on the goat. At first, I couldn't understand laying on of hands on the head of the goat. I mean, they lay their hands on the elders and deacons. But why do they lay hands on the goat when it's not a deacon or elder? In Leviticus chapter 16, the Bible clearly explains Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat, confess over it all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions, concerning all their sins, bring them on the head of the goat. In the process of you know, handing the sin over, he lay his hand on the goat. Doesn't mean that the sins are resolved. And next, according to the price of sin, this goat must be killed for the sin to be washed. And the priest sprinkled the blood on the horns of the altar. Horns of the altar is where our sins are written on. In Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 1, The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron, with a point of a diamond. It is engraved on the tablet of their hearts, on the horns of your altars. By the goat shedding blood and dying, the sins are washed. By the blood of Jesus, when the sin is removed, that means sin is completely washed. So when we talk about the forgiveness of sin, and John chapter 1, chapter 1, it's only about the process of how sins are washed. Because the Lord was crucified and already died for our sins. So it means that by Him doing so, our sins are washed. The fundamental reason is not was because he confessed his sin by the blood of Jesus our sins are washed if people think wrong okay if we confess our sins says he forgive our sins if you only look at this part this is what it says if only we confess our sins then if Jesus doesn't have to be crucified, does that wash away our sins? No. Yes, it's true that we must confess, uh, we have to confess that we commit sin. But it is also just a made, uh, the process of our sins being washed. Because Jesus has already shed his blood and died for our sins. Realizing that I'm a sinner, the moment we realize that our sins were washed because of the blood of Jesus, that's when our sins are washed. So I talked about this with the, the Fiji broadcasting station, and amazingly, and I saw many people receiving change. I was so thankful. Important thing is, the anchor said that he received salvation. I was really thankful. Because we don't know the word of God precisely, we can easily fall into a different direction. Sometimes among the saints, some of the brothers and sisters, yes, they may know the Bible more than I do, but having the, there's a problem if they insist that they are right with the wrong Bible. But important thing is that some say that oh yeah, the laying on hands of gospel is wrong. I mean, they really don't know the Bible. This is why they say this. They only look at the one side of the Bible and talk about these things. 
First John chapter 1 verse 9, it's just only part of the process. In Romans chapter 3 verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If they look at this verse only, yes, we sinned, we fell short of the glory of God. So it's not that we should only look at this one verse. In the next verse, it says, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So is it right to say we are sinners? In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, yes, according to this verse, we are sinners. But when you look at verse 24, by the blood of Jesus, our sins are washed. God says we are justified. If God says we are justified, then we are justified. If you only look at Romans chapter 3, verse 23, Ah, oh, Pastor Park is wrong. The Bible says that we commit all these sins, but you say we don't have sin. Yes, we had sins. I'm not saying that we don't have sin. We had the sins. But by the blood of Jesus Christ, our sins are washed. If Jesus died on the cross and we say we are sinners, the death of Jesus is in vain. Many brothers, while preaching the gospel, if they know the Bible a little bit, they say they know. They talk about, they begin to criticize or passages like this and that. And they lie. In that way, there are some people who left the church. When they, when they leave, they say as if they will do well. I saw many people whose mentality have gone uh, deteriorated. Some people corrupted. Some people drink and get divorced. They live righteously. They just pretended that they know about the Bible. But when coming before Jesus, Everyone, uh, people were changed. The wedding feast of Cana, they ran out of wine, but water changed into wine. Everyone changed but Nicodemus because there's something he knew. He's really arrogant trying to insult his knowledge. No matter what kind of a wisdom people have, before the word of God, we must bend our heads. We must not talk about other things. We must believe. But just knowing one part of the Bible, just knowing the one by, the part of the Bible, they think they know everything. They come to be for the servant of God. They criticize, saying that you are wrong. And people like this cannot live a spiritual life. What we can learn from the blind man, because he doesn't know. He had no choice but to accept our word of Jesus as it is. And that is important. And knowing the Bible more broadly, if we know deeper, we can change amazingly. This time, in many French-speaking churches in West Africa wanted to give us support so we invited many people from these countries now they know how to eat kimchi so uh, it wasn't easy to eat kimchi from the beginning right because uh, they were you know different from Korean people but you completed it well sometimes when I go there to educate them. It, it was so nice. And I was so happy. So take away, uh, take with you what you've learned here. Go back to Africa. Go back to your country. Preach the word. Hope that you can have the amazing world of faith. I surely believe that your countries will be blessed. Thank you. Let us pray. We thank Holy Father God 
This time, precious people came from a far country. They came here and learned the word. The word of God remained in their hearts. It is so beautiful to see they contain the word of Jesus. We believe that the Lord is with them. May God bless the countries they are going back to. May the Lord add His blessing. We are so thankful. May God bless them. In the name of Jesus, I prayed. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you.